Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Uh, this is Tony Butler with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. I'm one of the life sales directors here, and on the call, I have both Jeff McClendon and Travis Bryant, who are with the surety, and with May, can't believe it's already May, May being Disability Awareness Month, um, we start thought about starting the month off right and talking to um, advisors in regards to their client's most valuable asset, which is their ability to earn an income. So before we get started in that, just a couple of things. If you're new to IMS, or even if you're not new to IMS, um, just make sure that you're talking to us in regards to how we can help you earn additional money, i.e. help grow your business. Uh, one of the ways in doing that is um, through our creative marketing solutions process where we can do a marketing analysis with you that can help you with growing your business, whether it be turnkey solutions, agency solutions, or digital solutions, which basically means if there's uh, another way that you're looking to market your business, uh, grow your business, or you're just starting out, um, here's some ways that we can help you uh, do that. Also, we can be your back office support. We want you to work smarter, not harder. So um, what we're able to do is partner with you and provide, whether it's sales coaching, um, help you with contracting, um, case management, uh, things like that. And one of the things that uh, we provide, and I know all IMOs provide this as a, a website, but our website is very user-friendly and it is catered to our partners, which is you, the advisors, um, and some of the things that uh, you're able to access on our website is forms. Um, if you're annuity producing agent, uh, we've got the uh, annuity grid along with the long-term care product grid. But the big thing is electronic applications. As you well know, uh, more and more carriers are doing e-apps and some are only doing e-apps only. So you have the ability to do electronic applications through a couple of platforms. One is through our website. And if you're a life insurance agent, uh, most of the carriers we work with uh, go through iGo eApp Solutions. And the majority of our annuity carriers go through the Firelight platform. Um, you can get registered to the Firelight platform through our website. And as you see here, there are a list of carriers that um, we work with both on the annuity side and there are a handful of life agents or life carriers, I should say, that um, are on the Firelight platform. If you haven't gotten registered or you're having trouble getting registered, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to get you set up there. We also talk about our Life and Annuity Academy, which is a two-day training, which includes, as you see here, sales ideas and strategies from top producers. Uh, we partner uh, with some of our top carriers um, to discuss industry trends, um, standards, whether it be on the life side or the annuity side. Uh, just last week, we had an academy in Des Moines. Uh, we partnered with Athene, very successful academy. And we have a few more that are scheduled out for this year. As you see, June 7th through the 9th, um, we've got a Life at Annuity Academy that's gonna be here in Omaha. In July, we have another one that's gonna be an IUL Academy, Index Universal Life Academy. We're still determining the location on that. And then in August, we have another IUL Academy. Um, the one in July is gonna be partnered with North American. Uh, the one in August is gonna be with Allianz. If those academies, um, interest you and you've never been to one or you want more information in regards to the academies, I do have a polling question that I want to get out there to make sure that we do reach out to you and provide you with more information on that. So hang on just a second. Let me get that out there. And if you could just respond to that, we'll make sure that a sales director does reach out to you um, in regards to that. So I'll leave this up just for a little bit and make sure that everybody responds. All right. Looks like we've got everybody there. So I'll go ahead and close that out. 
And lastly, we have our Seaside Sanctuary trip that's coming up um, in 2024. It um, takes 18 months as far as the qualification periods go. Um, as you see here, it's from July 1st of 2022 to the end of this year. Uh, 4.5 million points are required to qualify for the trip. Um, if you want more information in regards to that, uh, definitely reach out to us. I know that we have um, some advisors that have already qualified, some that are really close to qualifying. So uh, feel free to reach out to us for more details on that. So with that, Travis, you there? I am here. All right, so I am gonna turn this over to you here. Just give me a second. All right, you see that? All right, I do. And let me go ahead and show my screen. And now, are you guys seeing my full presentation or are you seeing the, uh, let's see which one it's on here. I've got the Assurity Sales Support. All right, okay. perfect. All right, and it's not the, the ones with all the notes on it. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much, Tony. We really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, come on here and, and talk a little bit about disability insurance. We, we definitely uh, uh, definitely appreciate the, the support and the relationship with IMS. Um, so we definitely glad to be here and, and talk about uh, disability when uh, it's May Disability Insurance Month. So <clears throat> if you guys need anything or have any questions, uh, can't reach Tony or anybody at IMS, feel free to reach out to Jeff or myself. We'll be glad to support in any way that we can. Uh, we do cover all of those individual products that are listed there. Again, today we are going to focus on disability uh, income or disability insurance for you. Uh, before we get started, I do like to talk a little bit about uh, Assurity and who we are, just in case you're not familiar with us. Uh, but we are a mutual organization. Uh, we've been helping people through difficult times for more than a century. So been in the business 132 plus years. Uh, we are your one-stop shop. Uh, for that middle income America. We have a four, full portfolio of product design, products designed to protect against what we call life's three risks, death, disability, and illness. Um, again, got our start back in 1890. We actually were a uh, merger of three companies. Um, we were looking at Woodman, Accident, and Life, uh, Security Financial, and Lincoln Direct, and that's what's formed Assurity. Uh, very proud, we are a LEED Gold certified company. That's a leadership in energy and environmental design. Uh, was a certificate certification we received based on our building being green, um, us being able to utilize cost saving and uh, being highly efficient. Uh, we are really, uh, really a symbol of sustainability and achievement and leadership. So very proud of that designation. Uh, we are an A minus rated company. And then the last one there you'll see is a certified B corporation. I'm not sure if anybody knows <clears throat> what a certified B Corporation is, uh, but in short, what we're trying to do is make the planet, the community um, better for the next generations that are coming through. Um, and that includes uh, everything that we do within the building, outside the building, as far as the paper we print on, the ink that we use, uh, just trying to make things, again, better for the planet as the next generations come through. If you'd like to see more information on that, go ahead and go out to certifiedbcorporation.net. Uh, it'll tell you everything about what's involved with that and how to become a certified B Corporation. And you will see we are the largest insurance carrier out there with that designation. Um, another thing I like to talk about um, is our Leaders Conference trip. Uh, we are one of the few carriers still out there that do provide a Leaders Conference trip if you qualify. Uh, this year, we are qualifying you to go internationally, although it's just a jump across the border. Uh, we are going to Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, so if you want to know what it takes to qualify, please reach out to uh, Jeff or myself. We'll let you know. Um, and if it's something you're very interested in, uh, we will get together, make a plan with you and make sure that we can get you there. More people that Jeff and I get there, the more opportunity we will have to get there ourselves and hang out with you and uh, have a few uh, opportunities to talk non-business and just uh, get a little bit personal. So, um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into what we're here today to talk about. It's our disability income insurance. Uh, very excited to walk you through um, our seller's guide today. I'm going to talk about huge sales opportunities in that middle market. And more importantly, we're going to show you how easy it is um, to sell DI sales with Assurity. 
um, and hopefully you'll walk away with information and tools you can use now to increase those sales. So the agenda today, we're going to talk uh, about um, how to get conversations going. I'm uh, going to go over features and facts, um, things you need to know, and where to look for prospects. I'm also going to talk about valuable new sales tools, uh, talk a little bit about how to understand our underwriting, and then we're going to go over some tips uh, for helping you close the sales. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, let's talk about those opportunities in the marketplace. Um, although just about everyone who relies on their income you know, should be protecting it. Um, there are certain markets that really present even more opportunities for sales and referrals. Um, doctors, lawyers, and executives may be considered the go-to market for disability income insurance, but there's a vast and underserved middle market out there. Uh, whether they buy it to protect their paycheck, their mortgage, uh, more Americans than ever have could gain financial security through a disability insurance policy. Uh, it seems like common sense, but people really do rely on their, their income. And when you dig into the facts, the reality is that most people would have financial difficulties in just a month or even less without their paycheck. Uh, people often don't realize that they actually, that they are actually their own biggest asset and their ability to earn income. So that stat seven in 10 Americans uh, would feel a pinch in a month or less without their paycheck. Um, also, another stat that talks about that is 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and a short-term disability could have a huge impact, not on just themselves, but, the, but their family, uh, their bills, and everything they have to take care of. Average duration of a disability, this is something people uh, don't really realize, but disabilities off, most often aren't just short-term events. So they may think they can get by for a month. Um, the fact is that average disability lasts nearly three years. And that's really a long time for someone to do without a paycheck. Even more eye-opening is 60% of the people in the workforce don't have any long-term disability insurance at all. So if a disability puts them out of work, what will they do once their short-term coverage stops paying? Um, these stats uh, paint a very clear picture of how unprepared many people are for the financial impact of a disability. With that all in mind, uh, you hopefully see a target market here, and it's a big one, that middle market. Uh, working Americans aged 25 to 55 across all occupations are great prospects. Um, really, these are people who depend on their income and are more than likely don't have enough saved to live without it. Um, these clients are from all walks of life. You know, those are teachers, realtors, nurses, contractors, and more. Uh, the occupation itself doesn't matter as much as the client's dependence on their income. And the ideal DI clients also have dependents who rely on their paychecks as well. They might be single, but odds are these are clients are married and may have children. Um, don't know if you guys know this, but the um, biggest selling season for mortgages is coming up. It's actually just started today. That's May into August. So about the next 100 days is the busiest home buying season of the year. Uh, so with kids out of school, nice weather, et cetera, this means more mortgages are being processed and there's more opportunities for producers like yourselves to offer ways to protect that investment. Two out of three American bankruptcies are actually tied to medical issues. So being that May is National Disability Awareness Month, it's really time to start talking about disability with those clients so they do not become another statistic. And lastly, another opportunity to find some clients. Um, when talking with agencies and brokerage leaders across the country, uh, there was one common message that was shared and new sources of profitable growth are in high demand. What is interesting though, is that most of these people fail to realize the opportunity they already have in front of them within their own book of business. This is a great source of leads at no additional cost. So let's go ahead and talk about questions that we can ask your clients. Now that we know, the, know who you're targeting, uh, we can cover the best ways to start a conversation with those clients to help them see the need for income protection. So some of the questions that we can ask, how, how much income would you need to support yourself if you could no longer work due to an illness or accident? How long could you go without a paycheck before it became difficult to pay your bills? And how would you afford to pay your mortgage if your paycheck stopped? 
the best questions really aren't yes or no answers. They are questions that help your clients think about their situation. Um, as always, we want you to listen to your clients and their concerns. Uh, most of the times when you're doing that, they bring up their own reason for income protection as you're talking. The main point is this, use these questions to help steer your conversation. When they realize just how dependent they are on the paycheck, they'll be looking to protect it. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, features, facts, and prospects that we have available for you here at Assurity. First product we're gonna talk about is our short-term disability product. We are the only individual carrier out there with a individual short-term disability product. Um, and it goes like this. We can cover you for accident and sickness, or we can cover you for accident only. We can consider more than one occupation for full-time employment. That just helps us get your benefit amount up to the max it can be. We have the own occupation definition built into the policy. Because it is a max of two years, um, that own occupation cover you, covers you for the life of the policy. There's no need to add a rider to push it past. This product does pay out on a weekly benefit versus a monthly. Um, there's no income verification. There's no medical exams. We do have a couple riders that are available that I'll go into more detail in the next slide. Uh, but that couple we see there, family care and stay at home spouse rider are huge. Uh, occupation classes, we can go 4A, clear down to 1A. 4A is gonna be your less labor intensive, uh, where 1A is gonna be your jobs that are requiring mostly manual labor. The weekly benefit amounts, we can go up to 600 max weekly for those self-employed or those 1099, uh, 1099 clients. Um, and then we can go up to 1,000 max weekly for those W-2. Um, if we wanna add those up for the 1099, you'd be looking at about 2,400 in a month and 4,000 in a month for W-2. Benefit periods, we can go as low as 13 weeks and again, push it out as far as two years. And the elimination periods, we can go as low as zero. And then depending on the benefit period, we can go out to a max of uh, 90 days. So I did mention we do have some writers on there. I do wanna talk about some of those just to kind of give you an idea of what they cover. Uh, first one is gonna be that family care writer. Uh, this is gonna pay a weekly benefit while the insured person is out on family medical leave. Um, and we use that as defined by the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993. Um, and this would come into play if they had to take time off of work to provide care for a child, a sick child, spouse, or parent. Um, the insured person must be employed on a full-time basis uh, when the FMLA leave begins and uh, must satisfy the elimination period. The benefit is actually 50% of the benefit that they qualified for. Um, so if they did qualify for say a thousand a week, then we would pay them 500 a week um, until they were able to get back to work or the benefit period had been satisfied. Guaranteed insurability rider, again, that's just gonna allow them to come back, request a larger benefit if they're not already at the max without having to provide proof of insurability. All we would need is just the new income statement showing that their salary has increased. Um, return to premium, that's just gonna return the premium should they cancel the policy at any time. Um, again, that's just going to be a portion up to 100% depending on when they would cancel the policy. Uh, retroactive injury, that's going to pay a lump sum benefit retroactive back to day one once they've satisfied the elimination period. Stay at home spouse rider, uh, this one is very unique and I really like this one for this product. Uh, this is going to allow the insured to bring on their stay at home spouse and provide coverage for that stay at home spouse should they become sick or injured and could not take care of things at home. Um, that benefit's gonna be up to a max of 250 weekly. And the caveat here is that they have to have no reported income. Um, so if they have no income, then they could be put on the policy and qualify for that benefit up to 250 weekly. All right, marketplaces for this product. We are seeing this as a big family marketplace with the optional family care rider and stay at home spouse rider. And then also the childbirth benefit rider that's built into the policy, which actually pays a lump sum payment to the uh, insured for the birth of a child. Um, that's gonna be up to a max of $500 lump sum payment. So I do wanna uh, mention that this is not a maternity benefit, it's just a childbirth benefit. 
So again, it's just gonna pay a lump sum payment up to a max of $500 for that birth of the child. And all you have to do is show proof of the birth with just a birth certificate. Um, we also um, noticed that we were able to target market the freelance and gig workers. Um, for those um, jobs, we really saw opportunity when COVID-19 kind of came around. A lot of people were not able to work their normal nine to five job um, due to COVID. So they had to look for other occupations outside of that nine to five job to kind of help supplement uh, income and, and pay the bills. So they took on freelance and gig works jobs. Um, with this, that provided us an opportunity uh, for those non-traditional workers with multiple occupations to provide a product that would help uh, help them should something happen to them and they become sick or injured. Uh, we also targeted um, little or no employer sponsored companies. So those smaller companies that don't have any coverage provided to their employees, um, you're probably looking at maybe 10 employees or less. Um, this is gonna be a great opportunity, a marketplace you could get into, talk to them about short-term disability. The great thing about these products is that they are completely portable. So if they leave the company, that'll follow them wherever they go. And with that, we're gonna transition over to our long-term disability product. This is called our Century Plus. Um, it is available for accident and sickness or accident only. Um, does consider uh, more than one occupation at a time. We can do 4A down to 1A. Um, our benefit amounts are 500 all the way up to 20,000. And we do have some great riders. We can go as low as five year all the way up to a max of age 60 to age 67. On this product, we do have some great riders that are available. Uh, we have our return of premium. We have our own occupation rider that's gonna allow them to extend out past the two year benefit that's built in. We have our critical illness that's gonna pay them a lump sum payment should they come down with a first ever discovered critical illness. Uh, guaranteed insurability, again, gonna be able to come back, ask for a larger benefit should their income change. Um, we can come and do that without proof of insurability. Uh, then we have our automatic benefit increase rider, which is our COLA rider. It's gonna be that cost of living rider. Marketplaces for this product, again, we are a middle income America uh, company. So we are really tailoring to those uh, clients that are 25 to 55 year old working Americans. Household incomes anywhere from 35,000 up to 150. Um, I'll even stretch it a little bit more. We do see some that come in up to about 200,000 where we're still priced really well. Um, some occupations that we uh, see a lot of, nurses, um, realtors, chiropractors are a big one. Uh, there are a lot of companies that don't um, allow chiropractors. We will. Um, for nurses, I will mention, uh, we will consider them 4A, which is our top occupation class for those non-surgical settings. And then we will actually consider them full-time at 24 hours a week versus 30 hours a week. And then we do have some perks for those small business owners. We do have a 20% income enhancer. Um, as long as they own 10% of the business, we can provide that. Uh, we can also do an occupation class upgrade as long as they're not in the medical field, a farmer or a truck driver. And then we can also offer a multi-life discount if the small business owner can get at least three individual policies um, on board with us. We'll give that discount to them as well as all the people that come on board. Um, I did mention earlier that these policies are completely portable. I will mention that this discount will follow the client anywhere they go as well. So if they leave the company, go to a new uh, company, this discount would follow them if they keep, kept the policy. All right, next product we're gonna talk about is our graded benefit, which is our option for those impaired risk clients. So those clients that traditionally can't get approved for our normal disability insurance, uh, we do have this product that we can pivot to and it is automatically automatically offered if the client is declined for Century Plus. How it works, uh, it's gonna look exactly like the Century Plus. Um, the only difference is gonna be the graded benefit in the first two years of the contract. Um, and you'll notice I said the contract, not the benefit period. So if the policy was issued and they were, became sick or injured in year three of the policy, then there would be no graded uh, benefit. It would just be 100%. Um, if they did become sick or injured in the first year or second year of the contract, the first year it would be graded at 35% of the benefit amount. 
and then the second year would be 70 percent and then years three on three plus would be a hundred percent so again a great op alternative for those impaired risk coverages that may have a long list of medical conditions and then we also um, automatically offer this for those that are declined um, again the premium might be a little bit higher but it's good to give them an option just in case um, they do want to take it on all right um, the last one we're going to talk about is our business overhead expense this is going to be for those small business owners we do reimbursement for operational expenses we can go from ages 18 to 60 uh, have to be working full time, so at least 30 hours a week for those nurses. Um, again, it's 24 hours a week. Uh, one year in the business as an owner with a net profit of at least 10,000 in that last year. We do have occupation classes 4A down to 2A, and we can go up to a max of 20,000. Uh, we can um, go for that farmer's market, which we consider in class 2A, and we can go up to a 3,000 monthly benefit. Uh, benefit periods are one or two years. And then the elimination periods, we can do 30, 60, or 90. So what's covered under those business uh, overhead expenses? So some of those examples are employees' salaries, wages and benefits, uh, rent or mortgage, utilities, uh, janitorial, office maintenance, um, taxes, fixed expenses, insurance premiums are covered. And then leases on furniture and equipment um, are also covered under that as well. Um, I talked about this already. Um, surety for small business, we give them that 20% uh, income enhancer. Um, we also can offer an occupation class upgrade to help uh, with the premiums. And then that 15% multi life discount, again, will follow you anywhere you go should you choose to leave the company. All right. Now that we've talked about the product, let's talk a little bit about the underwriting. And really, all you need to, to understand about disability insurance underwriting are three top topics, occupation, income, and medical history. We've really made it easy for you to know what's going on and for your clients to get the best possible coverage. So let's talk about that first one, occupation. Your client's monthly benefit amount and premium are based on their occupation class. Uh, we use their job duties, not their title, to classify the, their occupation into one of our four categories. And again, that's going to be anywhere from 4A down to 1A. Those are the four categories. Here's a great tip. If you can't de decide between two occupation classes, so if you're trying to figure out if they're 3A or 4A, um, obviously you can reach out to, to Tony at IMES, Jeff, or myself, and we can uh, look at it and give you a de definitive answer. But let's say you, you don't have the time to do that. Um, what we would suggest is just pick the lower class, um, and then if the client fits in the higher class, you as the agent get to go back and offer your client a lower rate than they originally saw. That's always a better conversation that way than trying to go the, the other way where you quoted it at the higher and then you have to give them bad news that the premium is actually higher because the occupation class is lower. So the second one was income, financial, and background. Uh, disability income insurance covers a portion of lost income and that's typically around 60%. Um, that's why we may require financial documentation. If we need it, we'll ask for federal tax returns or other common forms of documentation. Uh, just a tip, you can make the process easy. Uh, just complete one simple drop ticket form and our in-house team will take it from there. Um, this is an opportunity, um, if you don't have enough time, that you can fill out the client's information, submit that ticket over to Assurity and our in-house team will call out and administer the health questions and ask for any documentation that they mean, may need at that time. Um, this just helps save you time as well as the client time if that's an option you wanted to take advantage of. All right, and then the third piece was the medical history. Uh, we know medical history is a key part of underwriting, uh, but we don't want you to worry if your client has pre-existing conditions or, or injuries. Um, our underwriting experts automatically will offer that impaired risk coverage, again, that, um, impaired risk coverage um, that will help give them coverage should they not be able to qualify for that normal century plus um, and again remember you might be able to skip to skip steps two and three uh, should you do that drop ticket and we call out and administer those health questions on behalf of you all right let's talk about some of those tools to help you sell uh, we know a fact finding flyer uh, might be might be something that would be helpful for you and we do have those available 
Um, but we also have a few other pieces uh, that we feel uh, could work really well for you. First one we're gonna talk about is our social media kit. Um, we like to say that our marketing team is awesome here at Assurity. They are always in the background creating opportunities to help you as agents out in the field uh, get to more clients and drive more business and get more revenue in the door. And that includes our social media kit. They have done all the work for you, written down all the content, and all you have to do is go in, copy and paste to your social media uh, to help drive business towards that disability insurance. Some of the other tools that we have available um, for our short term, obviously we have consumer brochures, we have videos, uh, short videos that you can use to send out. And then we also have sales ideas brochures that will go over scenarios like the gig uh, gig workers or freelance workers. We also have the uh, family plan, the family plans that are targeted towards family members getting short-term disability. Um, we also have a quick start platform, which is our quote to application tool is uh, very customizable, can help you apply and get instant decision online within minutes. Um, and we can get you bound coverage, usually typically if approved uh, right away once you're submitting, as long as they are willing to put in their banking information and have that drawn right away, that coverage can be bound. Um, if you wanna talk a little bit more about quick start opportunities and getting that site customized, to look and feel just like your website where you're driving traffic, uh, definitely reach out to us, set up some time, and Jeff and I can go over that and let you know what's involved with it and uh, what the process is. Uh, for our Century Plus or our long term, again, we have some great brochures as well as um, some other target uh, brochures that you can use um, to help drive business your way. Now let's talk a little bit about tips for closing the sale. So now you know that there is a big need. We've got some tools and some great uh, conversation starters to help educate your clients. Um, and you know how underwriting works. Um, now let's take a look at how we can make sure uh, you're, you're closing the sale. Um, chances are your client will have concerns or objections. We see them all the time. Um, so asking them questions can help engage them in a discussion and show them the value of DI. So the first one we're gonna talk about is I don't think I'll use it. That's the biggest, most common objection that we see, especially from younger people. Um, and it's, you know, they just think that they'll never use it. So what can we do to combat that? Um, so these are some of the questions that you can ask back to your client. Um, you have medical insurance. Do you ever plan to use it? Did you know there's an optional rider you can get that returns your premium should you not use the insurance? Um, how would you feel if you needed DI but didn't have it? And did you know illnesses cause most disability or not, most disabilities, not injuries? So these are all great questions that you can pose back to your client to help get them thinking and realize that disability insurance is something of a need, not just a want. All right, um, the next question, I apologize, I'm not sure, uh, it's coming up as saying it's too expensive again, but let me, um, the next one is I have a disability income insurance through work. So how do we uh, combat that question? Um, the first one is gonna be, do you know the ins and outs of your group policy? For instance, the elimination and benefit periods. Um, is your monthly benefit amount enough to cover your needs? Um, are your benefits portable? Can they take that with you if you leave the job? Um, and do you know if your coverage applies outside of the workplace? These are, again, all great questions to ask them. If they don't know anything about what their current policy is, the odds are they're in need of some type of disability insurance outside of what their job offers. Um, but if they are still hesitant, you can always ask that they get a copy of it. We can help you read through it and we can let you know what they have exactly covered and if a disability insurance policy would help them out. So really we wanna help attach value to disability income and benefits, right? We wanna help clients understand DAI offers more than money. Uh, we're gonna give them options uh, we're, and choices. We're gonna help control when they feel they have, we're gonna help give control back to them when they feel they have none. So in the end, we really wanna try and tie it all together. We wanna tell a story. Uh, people really connect to stories. 
Your social media feed and television are filled with stories of people who faced a disability and were unable to work. Um, some of you may even know someone personally whose life was changed by a disability. Um, if they're willing to let you share that story, tell them why you have a disability policy and why it's important to you. Um, share stats. Um, we know in, you know in the industry, stats rarely sell insurance, but they can really help support the importance of why your clients need coverage. Uh, figures on lack of savings, the average duration of disability, social security disability approvals, and even medical bankruptcies are all valuable in helping to frame this discussion with your client. Um, you also need to emphasize the need. You know, losing their income could spiral into losing a whole time, a whole lot more. You know, you need to remind your client of the importance of protecting what they already have in case of an injury or illness. Um, but you also want to show them how little uh, pr protecting their mortgage could cost and then show them the cost of having no protection in place at all. Make it personal. Uh, ask your client what they would do if they could, couldn't provide for their family or support their lifestyle anymore. Having a disability income insurance plan can give them peace of mind now and into the future. Be confident. When you're working with a surety, you're working with a carrier that puts, you, puts people and planet first. As a mutual organization and a certified B Corporation, we're committed to using our business as a force for good. And with that, I uh, just want to let you know we are committed to your success. Been around for 130 plus years. Uh, you are getting the full backing of a carrier that wants to put you first. And we've been putting our distributors first for more than a century, and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Putting you first means designing products, processes, and support with you and your clients at the center. And with that, I will turn it over to Tony. Are there any questions or anyone that has any questions over everything that we went over today? Looks like there are some questions. Uh, let me change this back over to me. Okay, sure. There we go. You should still see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah, right. I do. Perfect. So... First question is, are any of these DI products available, California, Texas, or Oklahoma? Let me check here. I'm pretty sure they are available in all three. Yep, all three states. The only state that's mm -hmm. not available in, um, let's see. Okay, so the long term is available in all three of those states. Mm -hmm. the short term is available in all three except for california so california is not going to have the short-term disability that income protection mm -hmm. uh, the graded benefit will be available in all those states and the business overhead will be available in all those states so california is the only state with the short term it won't be available in all right and we have filed for um, the product to be approved in the state of california um, just to kind of let you know they did come back ask us to um, refine a little bit of our language so we have done that. We have submitted it back to the state of California. We are just waiting on that Department of Insurance to respond back and let us know. So we're really just kind of at the mercy of whenever they get to it and let us know if it's approved. Okay. I jotted a couple of things down because as um, this invite went out, there were some questions that were sent to me. Um, also, there's some questions that have come up um, through the months here leading up to uh, Disability Awareness Month. And one is nurse occupation class. Is there a difference in the occupation class if the nurse works in a hospital versus working like in a doctor's office? Um, the biggest thing is going to be uh, whether they're surgical or non-surgical. Um, right. That's gonna be the biggest thing for nurses. Um, so if they're working in the hospital, but it's non-surgical, we would consider them 4A. Um, if they're working in a hospital or surgical, we would consider them 3A. Um, but, you know, if they're working outside of the hospital, again, non-surgical, most likely it's going to be 4A again. And then if they are doing surgeries outside of the hospital, which I don't see that happening too much, it would still be considered 3A. All right. The other is farmers. A lot of their expenses or their income is thrown into their expenses. So like their W-2s or their income tax returns don't show a lot of income. Are you looking at it from, let's say, um, whether the land they farm or um, if they're farming, let's say, uh, cattle, is that mm -hmm. taken in consideration? 
Yes, absolutely. So two ways that we can work with farmers, because we know, you know, a lot of times farmers aren't showing a lot of income. We can absolutely go by herd size or acre size mm -hmm. to get um, to a benefit for them. Um, if we are going by herd or acre size, the max benefit is going to be, you know, 3000 that we can do for them on an individual product. Um, if they are showing income um, and they want to use income and we can provide more than 3000 and a benefit, we can absolutely go that route as well. Um, so it just depends on, you know, if the acre and herd size is going to get them more than what their income is, we probably go that route. But if their income can get them more than 3000, then we may want to look at that route. And just might be, um, you know, how the agent and the client want to go about it, but we can go either route for them. Then we got another question that just came across. Does long-term disability go to age 65 with an ONOC uh, definition? All right, so for our long-term disability, we have the ONOC built in for the first two years. And then we do have the ability uh, to add on the own occupation rider that can extend it out um, to you know whatever age they wanna look at. So if they had a policy set up for a benefit amount to age 65, um, we could go on and add that own occupation rider and push it out to age 65. Again, that would just be an additional cost for that rider to push it out. But again, we do have it built in for the first two years uh, for the client. Now to push it out to age 65, is a determining factor gonna be the OCT class? It's gonna be OCT class and also age as well. So okay. there are some, some caveats there. Uh, basically, what you're going to be looking at is any OCT class, you're going to be looking at 3A and 4A are going to be the ones that are going to be available uh, for that own occupation definition to uh, writer to push it out. Uh, 2A and 1A, they're not going to have the ability to add that writer on. I got another question here that's asking about commissions. I will um, address that one after the call. So Perfect. Who asked cool. that? who asked that question i will make sure to get you an answer on that then if a prospect gets uh a small i'm, I'm assuming it's beneficiary they abbreviated through work can you buy additional through a surety is their combined max of 60 percent replacement yeah, so if they already have um, coverage at work, I mean, we can look and see what we can get for them. Um, like I said, typically it's up to 60% of the income replacement. Um, what we've been told by our underwriters is that some of those occupations that are a little bit more, um, they have a little bit more income, sometimes that goes a little bit lower than the 60%, uh, but we will, we can plug in exactly what you have and then let you know what we are able to do. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, we can only go up to a max of 20,000. So if you have somebody that's looking to try and get something over 20,000 and they already have something in place, um, then it's not gonna be a true 60%. We're gonna look at that and subtract, say they were getting like 5,000. Now let's do a higher number because to get to 20, maybe they already had like 15,000 coming in and they were looking to get maybe another 15,000. Um, at surety here, we'd only be able to provide another 5,000 because we can only go up to a max of 20. They already have 15 available and five coming from us. So we can absolutely do that. We just would have to plug in the numbers and see uh, where they would stand. And of course, age and everything would take into account for that as well. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a caveat to that. Um, if they have disability through their employer, and this kind of segues into one of the um, issues that I ran into that I was going to bring up, mm -hmm. if they have disability insurance through their employer, uh, one thing to find out is if the premiums being paid by the employer or being paid by the employee. That's going to be a determining factor if they're looking for additional disability as well. If the uh, benefit is being played by the employer or the employee on the existing policy that they have with their employer, correct? That is correct. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. So that is also uh, good Im information to have, and that'll help us lock down almost a more exact number for the client for them. And then that goes back to, um, as an advisor, if you're talking to one of your clients and they say that they have disability through work, that's another question to ask is if it's being paid by the employer or are they paying the premiums? Because if it's being paid by the employer, uh, that benefit is taxed before they receive it. 
Correct, correct. Awesome. Great questions, great questions. All right. Let's see. Anything else, Tony? I'm looking. Okay. I'm looking. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Can you comment on typical range of annual premium? Um, not quite sure if I'm understanding that question. Yeah, I mean, not really an average premium that I can really give to you because there's a lot of factors that come into play. It's obviously going to depend on occupation class, um, you know, the job that they're doing, um, how old they are. So, I mean, that's all going to play into account. Um, so, you know, we don't have just kind of like a, a spreadsheet of numbers that you can use to say, hey, you fall into this range um, kind of thing. Um, that would be a lot of numbers to have to put on a spreadsheet because there are so many different occupations, um, salaries, ages that everyone's looking for. So um, really kind of hard to comment on what an average premium would look like. Um, obviously, the younger you, you are, the, the cheaper it is, the older you get, the more expensive it becomes. Um, but if you're looking for some illustrations on a specific client, get that over to uh, to Tony um, or Trina or Beth, and uh, we can run. They can run some illustrations, kind of give you an idea, or they'll get it over to me, and we can get it out to you pretty quickly. I'm going to add a little uh, caveat to that one as well, um, especially if you're a, a, a life insurance agent, you primarily write life insurance, or you're an annuity agent, and you know, you write annuities or a combination of both. A lot of times people will come to us and ask the marketer, hey, can you run a quote? Disability is a little bit different animal in where you're looking at providing protection to their income. So providing a quote just for lack of a better term is gonna provide them numbers on something that they have to pay on. And if you look at it as a proposal as opposed to a quote, and I use the word proposal because you're basically setting this up based on them, based on their age, based on their occupation, based on their income. It's easier to speak to it when, when, you're, when you're giving it that because it caters to what they do and it caters to them. And more often than not, it's, the, it's more of a uh, acceptable conversation that they're more accepting than realizing that this is something that they do need, if absolutely. that makes sense. Yep, absolutely. But who asked that question, I'd be more than happy to uh, discuss that with you offline as well. All right. Here's a good one. What makes a surety DI benefit stand out from its competitors? Well, um, I, I, I will just put this on the back. Uh, been in the business 132 plus years. We actually um, started out as a disability insurance company. First policy we ever wrote was a disability policy. So we've been in the disability space a very long time. Our pricing is some of the best in the business out there, um, you know, when you're comparing apples to apples. But I really feel that some of the biggest things that we really bring to the table outside of just our service, which a lot of people talk about, you know, service after the fact, uh, we have some great underwriters that have been in the business a long time. I think our average um, underwriter tenure is about 22 years. Um, same on the claim side. We have an average tenure of about 24 years on there. So very well experienced and well versed uh, to really help tailor that uh, presentation or illustration to fit your client's needs. Um, you know, obviously we're A minus rated, uh, but our premiums and our um, pricing is gonna be right at the top. So if you're you're spreadsheeting us, you're gonna see us right at the top. We're one of the top two carriers, one of the top three carriers out there with a disability uh, policy, but then also adding in our living benefit riders, uh, being able to provide some other opportunities outside of disability like critical illness. So if something happened to them, um, they get a critical illness, we'll pay them a lump sum payment. It's going to help them get through those uh, elimination periods for disability until uh, that kicks in. Uh, so there's a lots of moving parts that really kind of set us apart uh, from the, the competition. Um, and, you know, we're, we're right there, local, right in the Midwest, uh, you know, in Nebraska. Um, so I think, you know, I think our product really kind of speaks for itself. Um, but, you know, if you want more information, we can get that over to you. Uh, we just feel like we have one of the better products in the industry out there. And there's a market that you guys really excel in, and that's the middle market. And like you Absolutely. said, based on income and um, 
occupation. And there are going to be some occupations because that's just what DI is, is there's some uh, carriers out there, they're going to cater to other occupations. Once we start getting that 150 plus, depending on the occupation, there might be another carrier that's going to more cater to that um, client, which yeah. I know we're talking to a surety, but we do have other carriers out there as well. Absolutely. So just wanna, Absolutely. Just yeah. And bring that up. Yep. And absolutely. And, um, you know, Jeff and I are, are no strangers to recommending other carriers that might fit the need uh, for that specific occupation or even like uh, what Tony was saying, those uh, more affluent clients that are uh, maybe making more than 150 or higher. You know, we consider those kind of the white collar. Um, and there are a lot of carriers out there that are specific to the white collar market where, you know, we are that middle income, the blue collar, the pink collar, the gray collar. Uh, space where our pricing fits well. Doesn't mean we can't do white collar and we do have some opportunities uh, that we can help out with some of those cases, especially when they're looking for some of those living benefit riders to add on um, to help tailor the coverage. Uh, but we are no stranger to recommending other carriers if it's truly in the best interest of the client. All right. And then I got one more. Any of the DI or LTC pays, uh, qualify for health deductions if they are over 7.5% uh, health extended? I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to defer to you just in case. Uh, well, I'm, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a tax expert, so okay. I'm not going to know anything about, okay. um, about that at all. all right. I'm thinking, and I could be wrong, and I'll follow up offline on this, but you have to remember disability insurance is um, your client's inability to be able to work due to an accident or illness where they're unable to earn an income. But I will definitely follow up on with that person on that question. Okay, perfect. All right. Oh, this is a good one. I'll end on this one in terms of questions. What okay. happens with DI um, or critical illness policy in case of death? So basically that disability causes death. So are they asking what happens to the policy if they pass away? Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if I, I'm thinking based on the question, is there an additional benefit if the disability causes death? It was an accident so, or illness that caused death. So on the disability side, um, if they were owed, it's like say they were already taking disability and maybe they were already owed a payment or payment was getting ready to come out and then they passed away, uh, we would pay that payment to the beneficiary and then the policy would cease. Um, unless they had like a return a premium uh, benefit on there, then we could return the premiums uh, depending on you know what year in the policy they were would determine the percentage. Um, that's on disability. Now on critical illness, of course, this is a different product. We weren't really talking about that we actually have a built-in return of premium upon death um, if they pass away from anything um, other than a critical illness that's specified in the policy. So I know we didn't talk about the critical illness standalone policy, uh, but there is a built-in return of premium feature for death should they pass away for anything other than a critical illness that's covered. And we have 11 conditions that are covered. I'm thinking they were asking the context of that question was based on, and I'll follow up with mm -hmm. DH, and I think it was based on being on claim because yep. of the disability, whether it was an accident or an illness, as I think yep. that's what they were referencing. Yep. So on the disability side, I mean, again, if the, they, they were on disability and they pass away, you know, we're paying them disability, they are owed, let's say they pass away and uh, we hadn't paid that you know, current months yet, but it's getting ready to pay out, that would pay out to the beneficiary and then the policy would cease to, to be in existence because the client would be no longer living. Okay. All right. Well, there's a, a few more polling questions. I want to make sure that I get out to everyone because I want to make sure that um, not only we've answered questions, but get additional information out to our advisors. So if you would like more information on what we just discussed, I've got a polling question here, if you could respond, we'll make sure to get additional information um, out to you. And Travis looks like there's quite a few people that want more information, so. Perfect, just let me know. We'll get you over everything you need, so. 
All right. Actually, I can just, I'll shoot you over everything that we have. And um, yeah, if there's anything specific they're asking for, then uh, we can get that to you as well. All right, cool. All right, and... Do you have any clients in mind um, that you feel that this would uh, spark a conversation or spark the idea of having a conversation with your clients? I'm biased. I'm going to say that anytime that you are talking to your client, you should at least ask the question, hey, what are you doing to protect your income? That's just me. Here's one question I can give you. Because uh, I had mentioned then to, uh, you know, May into August is the biggest home buying season. Uh, simple question to ask your clients when, you know, when you're talking to them, it's just basically stating, is it important that your family stay in the home should something happen to you and you can't work? Uh, yeah, simple question, simple question. And that should gear the conversation right towards disability insurance for you. And lastly, if you're not appointed with the surety, and you're looking to get appointed with the surety. I have a following question for that as well. And quite a few people are saying yes to that one as well, Travis. All right, perfect. All right, I'll leave this up for a few more seconds. <laughs> Make sure we get everybody. Uh, all right. So that's it for the polling questions. I think there's a couple other uh, questions there, but definitely address those because um, we were just a lot at the hour here. Um, if you do have additional questions and you want to reach out, as you see here, um, my contact information here, as well as Trina Murray and Beth Reckless, who are the other life sales directors. Um, we do life, disability, critical illness, and long-term care. So um, feel free to give us a call, shoot an email. Um, be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. It's, as you know, our 800 number is here, 800-255-5055. Um, you can ask for anyone in the life department um, to help with that, life sales, I should say. And finally, uh, for this content, as well as other uh, pieces of content, uh, whether it be um, different things that we have going on here at IMES, um, webinars, things like that, um, you can like and follow us either on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn and be able to have access to that content as well. So that's it on my end. Travis, do you have any uh, final words? No, I think we are good. We appreciate the opportunity, you know, to present today. We appreciate the relationship and uh, we look forward to all of you getting contracted and uh, writing your first DI case with us. Well, we appreciate our relationship with the surety as well as our relationship with our advisors. And again, any questions, feel free to uh, give us a call. You guys have a great week and we'll talk to you later.